My name is Dean and I've quit drinking alcohol. And in these videos, I share with you why I quit, how I got to the point of quitting, what I did to quit, and now what I'm doing to keep my life sober and not just be sober, but actually have a better life than I had before. Today's video is probably the most important one I've made so far because it is the most important tool that I've used to not just help me quit alcohol, but change my entire life for the better. There's no secret or build up. It's simply this writing, introspective writing. And in this video, I'm going to share with you the three most effective ways that you can use this tool, ranging from the easiest and most applicable method that you can use immediately to something slightly more advanced to something far more advanced. And over time, you can graduate through these different processes. But right now, this is just a brain dump from me to share everything I know about what has worked using writing as a tool to change my life. Tool. Tool to change my life, not a tool. I'm gonna to do my best to keep this as concise as possible and as practical as possible, but I may go off on a tangent because I feel emotional about the subject, I may get lost in it. And so to keep me on track, I will put a blog article together that goes with this video. You can see the link below that will have the rules and exercises and ways you can do this in a much more succinct way. Let me in this video brain dump away and get it all out. And this is exactly the reason why I've been holding off from making this video because I've been nervous. Will I get it right? Will I be able to say the things in a way that'll be so effective to help other people? Well, right now I have let go of all that. I'm telling you what happened and what I do and what is working. With all that preamble, let's get into this. The three ways of using writing that have been most effective for me for quitting alcohol and improving my life have been this. Number one, emo dumping. Number two is daily journaling. And number three is deeper, specific writing exercises, especially shadow work. You can jump to any specific one of these by checking the timeline and the chapter markers below. The first one and the most important one is emo dumping or emotional dumping. This is exactly as it sounds. It's a way to just vomit out all your negative emotions. Negative emotions were something that just absolutely governed my life and my behavior for so long, for too long. And I had no idea this was even happening. Why? Well, obviously because I was self-medicating with alcohol. Not intentionally, I didn't know I was doing this, but when I realized that my life was falling apart and the more I was drinking, the more it was falling apart, the more the cycle happened, the more I realized, wait, something's broken in my system here, something's wrong. Luckily, I fell into the right group of people. I found a person who helped me get into writing. I set myself up for a 30 day challenge of just getting it all out, just every day writing about things I hate about myself, what I don't like, what how I wish I was different. I didn't hold back, I just, let it all out. There was swearing, there was anger, I was upset. It was literally like vomiting all the gross stuff that was in my body and in, in my head, my thoughts just blah, onto a page. The biggest benefit of this is that there is almost an immediate catharsis. There is a definite state shift when you do this from a before state where you feel like crap and you just wanna have a drink, you wanna escape, you want something, you need food, you need alcohol, you need cigarettes, you need games, you need social media, you need something, just anything but here. But instead you get paper and pen and you just write, I feel X, I feel sick, I feel ashamed, I, I hate myself right now, I hate this, I hate that, I hate my neighbors, I don't like this, I, I wish this was different. And you just go, just that. Basically be that person you don't wanna be. Dare to be the person that if anybody saw you, they would go, wow. What's wrong with you? By the time you've got a couple of paragraphs of this out of you, you may start to feel a little bit lighter. Don't stop there, keep going. And if you don't know how to continue and you don't know what to write, just sit there and think about it for a moment or start writing, I don't know what else to stay. And that pisses me off too. <laughs> or I feel useless right now. It's a skill to learn to know what you're feeling because you are always feeling something. So even if you're sitting there and you go, I don't know what to write, I'm not feeling anything. Oh, guess what? That's what you write. I'm not feeling anything. I am dead inside because that is what you're feeling. See what I'm trying to say here? There's always something to write. You're documenting what you are feeling 
And you do this usually when you're feeling bad. So eventually you will pop out on the other side and you will feel better. Once I understood this concept, I actually became quite addicted to this process. It became my SOS, the, the red button I could hit, the emergency button every time I felt bad or I had urges to want to drink again. And I'm not talking about now in the last four months that I have quit, but instead two years ago when I decided to really quit for the first time. That was what made the difference. That is what brought out the change in me that said, I want this. I want to change. I want to get to know the side of me that I have been suppressing this entire time. In summary, emo dumping is something you can use as an emergency tool when you're feeling down, when you're feeling bad, or when you're feeling triggered to want to relapse. You can also use it for any other emotionally upsetting things in your life. And the more you do this, the better you get at recognizing your own emotional patterns. So keep doing it. And if you really want to get good at this and you really want to make a breakthrough, do what I did when I first decided to quit and do a 30-day challenge of just getting it out every single day. I didn't do that because I had intended to quit alcohol. I quit alcohol as a consequence of having done that. The reason I did it was for other problems in my life. Quitting alcohol was the positive consequence of it. I cannot emphasize enough how important that was to change who I was from before writing to after writing. Insane change. And with that 30-day challenge where you do it every day, it's a great segue into point number two, which is daily journaling. Across the self-help and self-development space, you're going to hear about journaling in many different forms and ways. And while I am, of course, a big advocate for this and have done a lot of this myself in the last two to three years, but I will say this, it's a much harder thing to get used to and to keep up. It's harder to be sustainable with this habit. Emo dumping is something that is very acute and very immediate. So you feel something and you can kind of go to it quickly as an escape. The same way you feel like, oh, I need the alcohol right now. You can say, oh, I need my journal right now to emo dump this because it's going to save me. So that one's pretty easy to get in as a habit because the trigger is so clear. But with daily journaling, there might not be a trigger. You might just have a normal day, nothing happens. So why should you even get out your journal? And this is exactly why this type of journaling is very different. Daily journaling is more about taking stock of your life beyond the negative emotions. It's about capturing data of your day-to-day -day life so that you can work with that data and improve your life. For example, if you're having a very good day, can you note down why it's good? What made it good? What led to the feelings that you're having in that day? And then over enough time, you'll start to see patterns in what leads to good behavior and bad behavior, good moods and bad moods. Then of course, with this data, you can take control and create environments that lead to more good days, more good moods. At the end of the day, you could say we're all victims of our emotions. So you might as well be a victim of your positive emotions rather than your negative emotions. And daily journaling is a way that you can start to get into this. Let's get practical with this. There are three sub practices that you can use to do daily daily journaling. Well, at least this is the way that I did it and it's been very effective. The first one is a mini emo dump, like the first exercise. Just start writing and have a quick check-in with how your emotions are. Not necessarily in that moment, but of that day. What was the emotion, the predominant emotion of that day? Was it a good day? Was it a bad day? Just take a, make a few notes about that. The second thing is what is a lesson that you learned in that day? What is something that happened or something you can take note of that you can say, I learned something today and I'm going to use this in the future. And if you can capture some form of lesson, some form of that was interesting, that was good, I'm glad I noticed that. It's just a way to become more present with what is happening in your day. And it doesn't have to be related to emotions, so that's how it's different. And then the third and final part is gratitude. What are you grateful for? Gratitude is one of those subjects that there's a lot to say about it. One could go into whole why gratitude journaling is important and, and what it does for the brain and for your emotions and all this. I'm gonna skip over all of that. All I can say is, Try it out, do this for 30 days and see how you feel. So every day, just pick three things that you're grateful for. They can be things that you own, things that you have, 
like your health. I'm grateful I have hands. I'm grateful I have eyes. I'm grateful for my laptop. I'm grateful for the camera and the mic I get to use. I'm grateful that my mom's still alive. I'm grateful that I have a friend. I'm grateful for the job that I have. I'm great. You can just every day pick three things. And if you want to take it a step further, write a because. I'm grateful for X because. Three little gratitude lines every day for 30 days. And I tell you, it's going to change something. And if you can keep this up for years, my goodness, it can change a lot. So part two in summary, do this every day, even if you only do it for a short burst, say I'm gonna do this for a week or I'm gonna do this for 10 days or 30 days. And you can give yourself a bit of a break, see what it did for you and go, I'm gonna do that again. And that's exactly the way that I've done it over the last few years. I have periods where I journal every day and then I kind of fall away for two or three weeks and then I'll come back to it again. And now the third and final phase, deliberate writing exercises with an emphasis on shadow work. Writing exercises are simply prompts that you can use, questions that target specific problems or specific areas that you want to tackle. The first chapter in this video, emo dumping, is an example of that. The prompt is, how are you feeling right now? That is the prompt. Of course, when it comes to writing exercises, there are thousands to pick from. There are courses, there are options, there are, there are lists of questions. You can Google top 10 writing prompts for introspective journaling. I have my favorite ones, but this is where I cannot recommend what's right for you. And this is also why I say this is the third part that you can kind of add on later. The reason for that is that this is where your journey starts to become very unique to you. The prompts that I need are to solve problems in my life. Problems that I've become aware of because of the first two types of journaling. I did emo dumping for over a year before I even attempted to do the other types of journaling. And through that process, I obviously learned a lot about myself, which then helped me decide which questions I wanted to take this further on. And I can, of course, recommend a couple of questions that are a little bit more on the generic side that can lead you down a path. I'll put those in the document that accompanies this video. But there is one category, as I've alluded to already, shadow work, that you can get to immediately. You don't need to wait a year of emo dumping or months of daily journaling before you can start shadow work. You can do that today, especially if you have compulsive habits or addictions that are afflicting your life. Shadow work is simply the commitment to looking at the dark stuff within you, the horrible, painful stuff that is probably the reason you have become an addict in the first place. Shadow work can also be broken down into various different types of exercises. And I'm not gonna go into that in this video because I've already gone on quite long. But if you've never heard of shadow work, well, now you have, look it up, research it, and start doing some writing exercises. In the previous two videos, I spoke about how I did a 30-day Spartan challenge that was in August of this year. And in that challenge, I basically did daily journaling. I chose to do it in the night and reflect back on my day. But in the month that followed Spartan Mode, in the month of September, I committed to doing shadow work. And I will share with you the one type of exercise that had a huge impact on me to where I am today and how I'm dealing with my sobriety as a whole and problem solving and self-development in general. It's called parts work, also known as IFS or internal family systems. There's probably a much more accurate description. I'll leave that to the psychologists to tell you. But in a nutshell, it's this. You have various versions of you that show up in life. Almost like each emotion you have is a different character within you that takes control of your body and drives you. When you are angry, you are in angry mode. When you are in love, you're in love mode. And what's important for a sobriety journey is to identify that you have an addiction mode. You have a person, character within you that is the addict self. And this is the character that you basically want to have a conversation with. Some neutral version or some positive version of you wants to have a chat with the addict version of you to understand why do you exist? What do you want? What are you trying to achieve? Why do you want the substance? And if you can get into a dialogue with your addict self, it might be revealing as to what is causing you the inner pain. Because at the end of the day, the addict self is not actually trying to harm you. It's actually trying to protect you, but in a way that is inefficient. And if you can work that out, you'll start to understand why you have this addiction and from that point on, you can start to do the work to replace that problem 
I've spoken about this in other videos before, but that's the exercise. Start talking to your addict self. And I took it a step further. I started to identify other versions of myself. For example, the neurotic version. I call this the drama queen Dean inside of me who shows up when there is a panic or something awful going on. Now, this is a character that I used to be in real life all the time. In my early 20s, people knew me as like the dramatic person, you know, always making a scene when I made a mistake or something. And I haven't been like that for the last few years. And why is that? Well, because I gave a space in my journal for this character to exist. It is a part of me. It is just the way I am. And I accept that. And I had to have a space where I can express my neurosis, where I could express my anxiety. And when you see that on the page, you kind of go, I get to be. This character gets to exist, but it doesn't have to drive me in my everyday life. It doesn't have to be who I show up in a meeting where I've done something wrong and I start acting all funny. I can be calm and stoic and go, this is freaking me out right now. I'm feeling very embarrassed, but I'm going to stay calm because I'm going to let this all out in my journal later. <laughs> and I've done that. I've done that many times. And it just leads you to a place where you have more balance and more calm in your everyday life. And this is something that just compounds on, on itself. It just keeps getting better and better the more aware you become of the different parts of yourself and who gets to drive you when. So that's parts work. I spent a lot of time and I wrote a lot of pages studying this and I've taken it further. I've given it assigned it energy codes and all sorts of that, but that's my journey. That, that's irrelevant. That was the starting point and that's the part that I wanted to share with you. In summary, those are the three writing, introspective writing types that I have used effectively to help me quit my addiction, but also dramatically improve my life and continuing to improve my life while still using them and furthering them. So one more time, that's emo dumping when you're in an emergency, daily journaling to take stock of your life, both the good and the bad, so that you have that data that you can use to keep improving your life. And then lastly, going deep inside the shadow work. And that is the real stuff that's going to help you actually heal and grow. If you would like some more help with the shadow work, then I can recommend the course on Quit by Healing. It is completely free. And I will link to that in the article that I have mentioned before. So yes, that was a bit of a longer video. I feel relieved now that I got that out of my system. I got to share that and I'd like to thank you for being here. I know that if you do this stuff, it's going to have a positive impact. So if you do do it, please let me know. Let me know what it's done for you. And I'd be happy to share our stories in the comments below. See you in the next one.